Hello, good morning folks. So we're here today to do a little bit more work on the flu. I noticed that uh, whilst editing yesterday's video, a few things sort of flagged up in my mind. One of them was uh, that whilst the <clears throat> boil kettle was on full tilt, it struggled to pick up the majority of the steam and I thought perhaps inside the position of the sprayers, <clears throat> be it all down one side, meant that the, uh, the spray wasn't covering every area inside the funnel. So perhaps what we'll do is relocate the bottom one so it's almost 90 degrees to the other three sprayers and then possibly even add another sprayer up on the top elbow because I don't think we're pulling enough water through to do the transfer of energy. So, uh, Dubrew, I think his name was, sent me a, uh, a PDF of a homebrew version of this and on there were some handy little calculators to enable me to determine the energy values, the energy transfer values from vaporization to back to condensation. So I'm looking at the amount of water that I'm pushing in there with the uh, four sprayers and I think we're gonna need another one. So I'm gonna take this down today. We'll add another sprayer to the, app, um, to the, to the uh, elbow at the top. Um, and we'll see how we get on. We've also got some people apparently coming to do some repair work up on that roof up there. Whether they turn up today or not is another factor because I'm not uh, I'm not paying for them. The landlord is. So uh, if they turn up, vis-a-vis -vis take an opinion on whether they want to be filmed or not, I imagine not. So uh, we may be confined to the workshop today, folks. We'll see how she goes. So I've got the, uh, the stove pipe on the floor. And as you can see, we've got water coming through the misters <clears throat> at the top. Looking down on the inside, which is going to be quite difficult because of the uh, spray fogging up the lens, I can see that there is a gap, but it's pretty much filled with, um, well, it's filled with mist bouncing off the walls, so that shouldn't really be an issue. See if we can look down into there with the light you see the spray pattern I mean it's pretty misty if you ask me so I can't see can't really see that being an issue there we are you can see that there's mist everywhere But the real question is, is there enough mist? So I'm gonna take this off here and we're gonna add another sprayer to the system, giving us a total of five sprayers. And this one's gonna sit on the top of the flue and point downwards. So this is gonna fire mist down, hopefully bringing the majority of the steam with it. With a Venturi effect, I can't really use the uh, the air venturi that I was given here because that means I have to pump air into the system and if I pump any air into the system uh, it's going to give uh, I'm going to have to hook the compressor up to it for a start which is a pain in the arse and then secondly it's going to push the steam through too fast I think for the condensation to happen that's why that's my um, theory so we'll stick another jet in. We've got five. Uh, and we'll see how we go with that um, option. Stuttering Stanley again this morning. It's contagious.
few bits welded up. Stuart brought me a sausage roll from Bacon's, one of Retford's finest butchers and delicatessens. Mmm, and patisserie. So, uh, it looks like it's a no show from the roof in Dick's, <laughs> as Pugwan might say. Uh, it's five past eleven. I'm guessing they're not going to turn up. I did get a message from the landlord on yesterday saying they were going to come on Friday or Saturday and then he turned up at 12 o'clock and said he's coming tomorrow. So we're getting mixed messages here. It's going to be unfortunate if he turns up on Friday or Saturday because I won't be here. That's right, it's Abigail's birthday on Saturday and then obviously it's Christmas after the weekend. So uh, they're going to have to put it off because I'm not coming in. I'll be doing other things to entertain you on YouTube. So we've got these few parts welded now. I've turned the argon off. I'm just going to let them cool before I apply any pickling paste. And then we're going to go up there and attempt to uh, pipe up the top spray nozzle, which will be this one, and see if that gives us uh, better results on the steam capture and condensation. <laughs> Kind of almost here with this steam condenser. It's dragging on a little bit, I know. So we've got the top air sprayer, three sprayers down the centre. I put the bottom sprayer on at 90 degrees to the other three. So there are five sprayers there covering lots of different area. And with the extra sprayer, we should be putting another, uh, I think it's, uh, let me think, 4, 8, 12, 16. About 20 or 30 litres per hour extra going in through the extra spray nozzle. So hopefully that will be enough water to take the energy out of the steam, condense it back into, into liquid. And then I want to seal the base of the cone off. So I've printed out a little uh, diagram here. This is basically the size of the cone at the bottom. Uh, Andy at GC could have got me a um, concentric reducer for this but he says why don't you make one he's right I can probably make one so on his uh, advice I think we're going to tackle this uh, we've got a template which I printed out there should be a name block layers block layers metric uh, is the website that I use for this I basically just punched in the dimensions and told him I wanted to make a six segment uh, cone, concentric cone, and it prints out a template of one of the segments for you. So all I'm going to do is cut this out, lay it onto some pieces of scrap steel, cut out six of these, and then we're going to tack them up and hopefully they'll fit on there. I could, I could go ahead and uh, make these out of paper first to make sure they fit but I'm pretty certain looking at this, it's gonna be about right. So we'll just dive straight in and see how far we get today. Uh, knocking this bad boy up.
check it out, check it out, check it out. We have uh, the Soyuz capsule for the top of the, uh, what was it called? Rocket, anyway, I can't remember what they were called. I'm sure someone will leave a comment down below what the rockets were that took us to the moon. Uh, anyway, took the Apollo missions. Uh, so, all I need to do is try and put a radius on these flat sections, just on the outside. The top bit, not too bothered about that. What I can do, if I have one spare, is uh, put like a, a male RJT on the end like that and uh, I've done with it. I'm sure I've got a aha there's one on the end of there look so that will be big enough oh easily big enough to go on there so I'll put a two inch male RJT on the end and then when we come to take it to duct the waste away I can just insert something like this with a three quarter inch pipe on there and then we'll just pipe in fact I think just like a 15 mil pipe will do it but I'll put three quarter inch pipe on there and pipe it out to waste and uh, yeah that will get rid of the water that we uh, condense back from the boil which reminds me a lot of people have given me a lot of suggestions on what I should be doing with the waste water. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is what I think is the best approach to dealing with this. So we're going to get something in the region of maybe up to 50 to 100 litres of water pumped through uh, the condenser flue to try and condense all of the steam that comes from from the boiler. Now I don't want to recapture and reuse that water for brewing because of course it's going to contain all the DMS. So we're going to get rid of that water. Now I could use that water for something else um, such as cleaning for instance but I already have an overspill from the HLT when we recapture the heat from the boil. So there's enough there for me to use for cleaning. Um, and if I was going to, for instance, set up a separate glycol heat exchange to cool the heated water and then just recirculate the water, the way I look at it, we live in the UK, which is a predominantly wet area. So for me to spend the electricity, burn the carbon, if you like, thinking of renewable energy and all this kind of jazz, to operate a glycol chiller and then use that glycol chiller to cool the water which we've already spent energy on to heat would give me a carbon footprint twice the size of what the boil would have cost initially. Are you following me? So I think it would be false economy to try and cool the water and recirculate it just instead of using a hundred litres to cool it. You know, a hundred litres in industry is nothing and in the end it's actually going back to, uh, you know, the waterworks in the town. Well, they'll reprocess it anyway. So, in a way, it's getting recycled. I just think uh, it would be less of a carbon footprint if we let that water go and it would be more energy efficient and cheaper. So that's my thoughts on this. So the water out of here, I may use a little bit to splash around in a tank if it's hot to, to clean a tank to give it a hot rinse if it's so inclined to capture it. If not, it will be going down the drain. It certainly won't be used for brewing. Anyway, I'm going to get the hammer out and uh, I'm going to see if we can hammer this so it meets the circumference of the pipe a little better.
I've managed to get the top of the uh, stack on, or actually the bottom, so that's now welded. Gemma's here to pick me up, we're going to go to Dominic's play tonight. Uh, so that's two and two days, nativities. Yay! <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just turn all the gas off and everything here. Leave this to cool overnight. And then what we'll do is come back in and uh, pickle it in the morning. So it was a no-show from the roof guys whatsoever. Um, that looks pretty good actually. So if that'll stand up, we'll just be able to give you a quick quick shot of what it looks like. It won't stand up. But this is it anyway. So there's the base of it. And that's obviously going to link up to the next sexy only. Don't look too bad, even though it's uh, a six segment cone. Kind of worked. Right. Let's get ready for the off. Oh shit. Oh, shit. 